Thank you very much. Um, I'm told the key to being to feeling happy is to manage expectations, so I should have really been downplayed quite a lot at the start of that talk. Um, I think I'm kind of the sort of warm-up artist for what happens next, so if I'm rubbish, that'll make everyone else sound uh, good. Um, I did hear also that um, I think controversy can be engaging or something, so let's be controversial. Take your phones out. Take your phones out. Turn them off. Put them on the table in front of you. Everybody, take the phones out turn them off and put them, ta put them on the table in front of you. Because what I want you to do is I want you to pay attention. And I want you to pay attention because it will make you happy. Actually, I want you to listen to me, that's the main reason, but I want you to pay attention because it will make you feel good. We are essentially what we attend to. How we feel is influenced by what we pay attention to. And by and large, most of the time, we feel happiest when we're paying attention to what we're doing, to the activities that we are engaged in. It's actually quite interesting that we use the term pay attention because it means that we are literally paying. And when you're attending to one thing, it means you necessarily can't be attending to other things. And you are happiest when you attend to what you're doing because it doesn't require attentional energy. Basically, the brain is lazy. It wants to conserve attentional energy. And if you start darting it around all over the place, checking your emails, checking Twitter, looking at Facebook, having a conversation with people, it requires effort and energy. Your brain gets tired from having to switch. And there's really good evidence that that makes people not only less happy, but not very good at what they're doing either. So in one recent experiment, which I quite liked, the subjects were asked to do a Sudoku puzzle and a crossword. And they could do them in any order they liked, or they could flip backwards and forwards, or they were told which order to answer them in. Now, you might expect, and this is what happened, that the people that switched backwards and forwards took much more time than those that could choose the order. But interestingly, both of those two groups finished the tasks less fast than those that were told which order to do them in. Because even having a choice about which one you do first requires attentional energy. Energy that could otherwise be spent solving the puzzles. So you are what you attend to, and pay attention to what you're doing, and you'll be happy. Unfortunately, of course, modern age and the modern technology, and I'm going to sound a bit like a dinosaur now, although uh, well, I actually feel like one when I stand up in front of my LSE um, students each year. Um, each year I, I, I get older and they all stay the same age. It's a bit like Peter Pan backwards. But um, I'm not a dinosaur and I do like modern technology, although equally I don't like Twitter either. But still, and I don't have a Facebook account, but I do have internet and I do use my phone. Um, and modern technology is clearly fantastic, and I don't want to, you know, say otherwise, but it has brought some costs. And one of the costs is that we've become addicted to our mobile devices. Um, in fact, it's now recognized as a mental disorder. In fact, there's also a range of other conditions that um, in the, you know, kind of fullness of this work, we've found quite a few things that are quite interesting. Phantom vibration syndrome. You've all had that, right? It's not, it's not rude. Um, you've got your phone in your pocket, you think you've got a text message, you take your phone out, and you've still not got any friends. <laughs> we, are, we are addicted, and it's kind of crept up on us, almost by accident. So, in one study uh, involving men that, whose brains were imaged, and um, they were asked to think about a number of different scenarios, and the pain activation in their brains was measured. Losing the mobile phone was about as bad as when Bambi's mum died. <laughs> now, you've all seen Bambi, right? Now, don't tell me that you didn't cry, however old you were when you saw that for the first time. It's horrible when Bambi's mother dies, right? This is what losing a mobile phone feels like. This is what losing a mobile phone feels like. Literally, people would, would rather lose the friends that are in the phone than the phone itself. Now, <laughs> um, 
they'd actually rather forego sex than their phone for a whole weekend or a whole week or whatever period of time you give it to them for. That's how, that's how much people like their phones. Um, or how little they like sex, perhaps. I don't know. But so this has kind of crept up on us. It's almost like an attention distraction disorder. And I, and I use that term wisely because we're distracted from our attention by the environments that we place ourselves in. Um, attention deficit disorder is typically located in the person. We think about someone having the attributes of someone that has attention deficit disorder. I'm talking about a much more pervasive and widespread environmental influence on people's attention. And actually, our environment and our situation and our context drive much of what we do. So you will, of course, um, at times in your life, have engaged in automatic behaviours. Because the brain, what the brain wants to do, you know, it's, it's lazy and it wants to save energy. So what it will do, it will try to encode things so they become habit. So a really nice recent example for me was coming into London, where I go into Victoria, get a tube to Temple, walk up to the LSE. This one day, and I knew this consciously, my you know, conscious brain knew this, I was going to Imperial College rather than the LSE. I was at Embankment before I realised I was on the wrong tube. Why? Well, because my brain has just made it easy for me to automate that you know, journey. So I, I'm kind of three stops out of four going the wrong way before I consciously realise that I'm heading in the wrong direction. So our automatic system pops up and influences to large degree what we do. And don't think you're not influenced by this. You know, whether you buy that big bar of chocolate has almost everything to do whether it's on sale at the till rather than on sale in the supermarket hidden away. You don't consciously decide to buy that big kilo bar or however much it weighs for a pound um, until you see it on sale at the till when you're standing there waiting to check out. Heavily influenced by context, environment, situation. Um, so, that's actually pretty interesting and helpful because what it means is that we can design our environments and situations in ways that just make it easier for us to be happy without having to think about it. Do you know, it's really difficult to change minds. It's really difficult to change the way that we behave by changing the way that we think, our attitudes, beliefs, goals and motivations. But that's okay because if we can just nudge the behaviour We'll construct narratives that tell us a story about ourselves that are consistent with the actions that we undertake. So you can design your environments in ways that make it easier for you to be happy without having to think about it. So when your iPhone dies, you're forced to pay attention to other things, like your kids, maybe. Um, actually, do you know, as a, as a very serious point, um, Accident rates in uh, toddlers, preschool children, has actually for the first time started to increase, whilst in every other age group it's as it's always been falling. And one of the reasons potentially is that parents are attending to their phones and to the internet and to the emails and the Twitter whilst their kids are out in the street running into the road and being hit by cars. So it's, you know, it, is a, it is a really serious point that I'm actually trying to make here, even though uh, it may not sometimes appear it. So, um, Design the environment in ways that make it easier for you to be happy. You don't have to wait for your phone to die before you pay attention to your friends. 50% of adults and two-thirds of teens admit to using their phones whilst they're socialising. 70% of people admit to using internet whilst they're away on holiday. Don't take, your, don't take your laptop with you when you go away. Turn your phone off in, at the evening when you're out with your friends. There's a um, game in the US, it's called the mobile phone stacking game otherwise known as don't be a dick at dinner, and everybody puts their phones in the middle of the table, and the first person to answer it whilst they're out picks up the tab. So, this, so you make a pre-commitment to not do something, because it's really hard to try and change your mind about doing that, change the environment. One of the really good ways to do that is to make a pre-commitment to act in those ways. So in a sense, you can nudge yourself happy rather than having to shove yourself happy by trying to change your, change your mind. Um, so just to then um, essentially wrap up, I'm 
It feels like a real countdown clock here. You kind of, you know, I'm gonna, what's going to happen? Am I going to kind of go up in a puff of smoke at the end um, and disappear? Um, <laughs> that'd be nice. Um, so pay attention to what you do. Your happiness will be determined by it. And think about, now this is really quite challenging. Think about when you're making decisions, how much you're going to pay attention to the things that you think will matter in the experience of your lives. So, of course, it's one of the reasons why we think a pay rise is going to make us so much happier, because we think that we're going to be paying attention to the pay rise in the experience of our lives. And, of course, insofar as you did do that, you'd be made happy. If every day you woke up and said, it's great, I've had a pay rise, you would be happy. But you quickly withdraw attention from things that initially start off novel and new to find a new king of attention to focus on. So when making decisions, think about those things that will be attention-seeking in the experience of your lives and not just when you're making a decision about what things matter. Um, I could go on, I'd love to go on, but I'm now going to shut up. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.